there may be actually a cure for alcoholism. For anybody who struggled with their relationship to alcohol, we may have actually been stumbling across one now. And this recent article that just came out highlights exactly why. What I wanna talk about you guys in this is this latest article that just came out that was a small but hugely impactful study on people who are implementing a keto diet versus more of a carbohydrate full diet and how that affected their desire to want to drink alcohol. I coach on this lifestyle, carnivore and animal based. I implement it myself and the number of people who have come to me and said, Lauren, like I just don't even feel like drinking anymore. I just wanted to say how the carnivore diet has curved my alcohol cravings in a way that has dramatically changed my life. It has allowed me to make better choices with friends, allowed me to enjoy different sides of life that normally I wouldn't have with alcohol. And I just would like to say that I'm very appreciative of the carnivore diet for doing that. My name is Halsey Rodriguez. And the reason why I started this animal-based slash carnivore lifestyle is to cure a couple of autoimmune deficiencies that I have. One of them being cerebrotic dermatitis and the other one being a little more rare called multifocal motor neuropathy. A byproduct of this lifestyle has completely curved my vices. I no longer smoke weed or drink alcohol and have no desire to do so. The biggest benefactor from that has really allowed me to take in the moment and be present when I'm out and about with family or friends. But since going carnivore, my body cannot handle it at all. It's like drinking acid. Just after like one or two sips, I feel a burning sensation in my stomach. Just thinking about it, I feel the burning sensation, so I don't miss it at all. Hey Lauren, I was a casual drinker, weekends, outings with friends, things like that, before I went full carnivore. Around the holidays, I decided to do a 30-day all-meat challenge, and when I did that, it pretty much knocked out all cravings that I had, and I'm pretty far past, maybe like 20 days past that challenge now, and. I still haven't had a drink and I really have no craving for it at all. But that got me interested because I stopped drinking when I was 26 years old and I have a family of alcoholics. My mom passed away from alcoholism. My uncle passed away from alcoholism. And it's just kind of been this theme in my life where I decided when I was 26, like I don't want to have anything to do with it. But then I came across this article. We need to really investigate this and start to really understand what's going on here because this could benefit so many people. And this might mean that the way we're trying to benefit people in rehab and the research that we have right now is misguided. How can diet affect and disrupt this addiction pathway? So this is work done by actually none other than Nora Volka, who's the director of the National Institute of Drug Abuse. So she's a world leading neuroscientist and addiction expert. They actually uh, admitted a group of alcoholics to a detox unit, detoxed all of them with the same protocol. Half of them get a standard American diet, half of them get a ketogenic diet. And the ones who got the keto diet actually had fewer cravings for alcohol, they had fewer withdrawal symptoms from alcohol, their brain metabolism was improved, their brain inflammation was decreased. So let's go into this article. Essentially the article took 33 people and it randomly assigned those people to either a ketogenic diet, which in this scenario was a four to one ratio of grams of fat to grams of protein and carbs. So it was 80% fat, 15% protein, 5% carbohydrates. And then the other diet was a standard American diet that corresponded to about 50% calories from carbs and 15% protein and 35% fat. So it took 33 people, all of these people struggled with alcohol use disorder or another way of saying that is that they were alcoholics and it randomly assigned them to these different groups. Something that's worth mentioning is that all of the people that were involved in these diets actually had the same number of calorie intake. So the same amount of calories were there, but it just was the types of food that they were taking in. As they were looking into this, the reason that they were looking into this is that there was increasing evidence that suggests that a ketogenic diet, which is a high fat, low carb diet intervention reduces alcohol withdrawal severity and alcohol craving individuals with alcohol use disorder by shifting the brain energetics from glucose to ketones. So the people studying this, the people who were actually implementing the study did so because of all the research that's coming out about this. And there are tons and tons and tons of pieces of information coming out specifically about this topic and how shifting from carbs and sugar to ketones has reduced people's cravings for this. This is not the first article done. In this 
article, it says that we hypothesize that ketogenic group would reduce a neurobiological craving signature when individuals undergoing alcohol detoxification treatment were exposed to alcohol cues. So in the study, basically, they were not only going to study how people's like emotional cues were set off based off of alcohol being in front of them or smelling it or being around it in social settings, whatever that is, but also the near biological patterns that would set off. So they actually extracted brain responses to food and alcohol cues and quantified the degree to which each set of brain images shared a pattern of activation with a recently established measurement tool called the neurobiological craving signature. So again, they basically reviewed how these cues, both emotionally and neurobiologically affected these 33 different groups of people who had the same number of calories, but a different way of eating that was implemented. One was ketogenic, one was not, one was heavy on the carbohydrates to see what these patterns showed. And this is the conclusion that came from this study. It said a ketogenic diet reduces self-reported alcohol wanting and induced lower NCS studies, which is essentially the neurobiological cues and going off of brain patterns to an alcohol cues during inpatient treatment for alcohol use disorder. It goes on to say that, however, in the ketogenic diet group, alcohol wanting continued to decrease across the three weeks of abstinence while the NCS scores remain stable. So essentially it's saying that even though the brain patterns then also started to be actually more stable over time by implementing this ketogenic diet, meaning the cues to drink and the brain patterns weren't going up and down as they typically would. It still also meant that the people in these studies who were implementing a ketogenic diet also just didn't want to drink as much. They just were like, I am not really feeling it as much. And it continued to be that way over time. So in the final discussion of this and the final conclusion, it's saying the KD group demonstrated lower NCS responses compared to the SA, the other group, throughout the three-week intervention, which co-varied with an average blood BHB levels on the days of the MRI scans. Moreover, the ketogenic diet compared to the other diet demonstrated lower, quote, wanting ratings of the alcohol cues presented in the alcohol cue reactivity task, which did not correlate with the NCS. For the first time, we might actually really be diving into what's going on into the brain and why we have these cravings going on and how we could reduce them. So this kind of makes sense if I think about it. You know, I, I've been coaching people on carnivore quite a bit. I implement this. Again, I stopped drinking when I was 26 years old and I have a lot of experience with alcoholism because it's run in my family so much. And so I know what it looks like for people going in and out of rehab. And it's kind of this like revolving door. It's like, you go in, you come out, you go back in a year later, you go out. It's like people, they're not, they're not solving the problem always with the solutions that we've offered people who have alcohol addiction. And when I look back about like my life, I remember my uncle, when he would be out of rehab and trying to not drink, I remember he would eat like gallons of ice cream because that would help with his withdrawals. I remember when my mom was in rehab, they would give people in there a lot of candy and that helps them with the withdrawal withdrawals. And so if you think about it, we know that alcohol has a ton, a ton, a ton of sugar in it. And it also breaks down in the liver into sugar. Basically it's requiring our body to get used to sugar as its source of energy as one part of this. And so it kind of makes sense that when you remove access to sugar through a ketogenic diet, that now the body is reshifting its way of getting energy to ketones and shifting away from sugar as its source of energy, which would obviously make the brain start looking into other directions for energy, not just in the places that it's familiar with, which would be alcohol, which contains a ton of sugar. The other thing that's really interesting about this too, you guys, is that we know that sugar is very directly linked to a dopamine neurotransmitter. And we know that dopamine sets off a ton of joy and happiness in the brain. And so when we eat sugar, we get addicted to it because it sets off so much dopamine in our brains that it's like, woo, we're, we're being told in our brains that we're doing something good. So we're hacking a system that's been there for literally since we were invented as human beings. And we also know the same thing goes with processed foods and the same thing goes with carbs. Carbs break down in the body as sugar. And so when the body is getting access to the sugar, it goes, woo, <laughs> it tells us that we're really happy and there's something really good happening and that our dopamine receptors go off and fly off. And you to learn more about this, you can watch this video that I had here with Bardia. He has helped literally thousands of people across the world resolve their alcohol use disorder through understanding how to fix and hack the neurotransmitter 
dopamine. And so understanding that, we understand how dopamine and alcohol and sugar are all kind of related. And the sugar then rewards that person via dopamine to want to keep drinking. And so there goes that vicious cycle of drinking and drinking and drinking and craving drinking too. Because if you remember something positively in your mind, you're going to want to keep going back to that thing and keep going back and keep going back. And that's what's going on with alcohol and dopamine. So to me, this makes a lot of sense that by people going to a ketogenic diet or a carnivore and animal-based diet, it's ridding the body completely of having to need to rely on sugar or any kind of like carb that breaks down into sugar in the liver. And instead you rely on your body's natural source of energy which is ketones. And then you don't have those cravings anymore because your dopamine receptors are no longer connected to sugar. It's a just completely different connection. And so, you know, thinking about this, all the people that have talked to me about how carnivore animal base has helped them reduce their cravings and they don't even want to drink anymore. This is making a lot of sense to me. So, for anybody out there who is wanting to help somebody who has alcohol use disorder, or maybe you do, your family does, somebody in your family, your best friend, share this video with them. Help them see that a keto diet or a carnivore diet or an animal-based diet might be able to help them. And it's not just me saying this. I am biased, but we have this groundbreaking new article that just came out along with so many other ones out there about how a ketogenic diet is potentially benefiting people who are addicted to alcohol. This is potentially groundbreaking. We might be able to reinvent how rehabs are handled, the food that we have in there, and actually help these people who are struggling with alcohol use disorder to give them some solutions. So I hope you guys like this. I'd be so curious to hear what your thoughts are below. Let me know if you've had a similar experience. Drop a comment below or if you know somebody who has. Please share this with anybody out there who needs to see this. Like it if you liked it. And as always, subscribe because the more subscribers, the more base we have, the bigger audience we have, the bigger guests are that I can have on and the more truth that we can unravel. All right, you guys, I'll see you on the next one. See ya.